How you doing guys, welcome to another video. These videos are on unit three, how do we use the products of a chemical reaction. Make sure you've got pen, pencil, highlighter, and remember that these videos are for you, so make sure that you watch them any way that lets you understand the information better. Let's get into the videos. So, unit three, how do we use the products of chemical reactions? 3.1, how do we represent a chemical reaction? The understanding and outcomes for year 10 are identify reactants and products in a reaction, deduce the word and chemical equations when you're given the formulas, be able to apply the states solid, liquid, gas and aqueous, understand the law of conservation of mass, and be able to write accurate formulas for substances that we covered, covered in topic one, the periodic table. Make sure you check out the text ref, page 256 to 274. So what is a chemical reaction, a chemical equation? A chemical equation is a tool that describes a chemical reaction. It will always have reactants and products as well as some special conditions if required. In a chemical reaction, we have reactants on the left and the arrow either represents goes to or reacts to form products. So reactants react to form products. So in this example, we would have A and B, which are our reactants, and C is our product, or A and B react to form C. If we replace the reactants and the products with their chemical names, we give a word equation. So for instance, magnesium carbonate reacts with sulfuric acid, to form magnesium sulfate, carbon dioxide, and water. So the reactants are magnesium carbonate and sulfuric acid. The word reacts to form is what separates the reactants and the products. So I've highlighted to form there, that's the arrow. So the things on the other side of the arrow would be magnesium sulfate, one of our products, carbon dioxide, and water. Now, if we were to write the worded equation for this, it's simply just putting that into an equation. So we have magnesium carbonate plus sulfuric acid, our two reactants, goes to, so the arrow or reacts to form. Our products are magnesium sulfate plus carbon dioxide plus water. And we would describe this as the worded chemical equation. For the worded chemical equation, we don't have to include states. If we're asked to write the chemical equation, the chemical equation is when we swap the words out for the chemical symbols. So the formula for magnesium carbonate, MgCO3, plus sulfuric acid, H2SO4, goes to magnesium sulfate, MgSO4, plus carbon dioxide, CO2, plus water. When we write balanced chemical equations, we must write the states. And reactants and products can be in four different types of states. The easiest ones for you guys to understand will be a solid and a gas. Both of those make pretty good sense to, to most people. Liquids, on the other hand, are a little bit controversial. Whenever you have water present, water will always be described as a liquid. Other than that, you'll run into very few liquids because most of them are not pure substances. So another example of a liquid might be canola oil. You go to the pantry and all that's in that bottle is canola oil. So that is a liquid because it contains only one type of molecule. For most other, what we would call liquids, they'll actually be an aqueous solution. And an aqueous means that it's dissolved in a solvent. So for example, table salt, when you add that to water, it becomes an aqueous solution of water and salt. The water breaks apart the salt into its ions, the positive cations and the negative anions. And the way the water does this is the water comes in and pulls apart the positive and negative ions, and they become surrounded by water molecules. When they're surrounded by water molecules, they're able to move independently of each other, and we say that they are now dissolved. That is an aqueous solution. 
So any ionic substance that's been dissolved in water is known as aqueous. <clears throat> Balancing a chemical reaction is a very important skill. And we must have the same number of atoms on both sides of the equations because we have a law for the conservation of mass. And that is that during a chemical reaction, atoms are never created or destroyed. So if we have a mass of some reactants and then we do a reaction, then the mass of the products will be the same because mass is conserved in a chemical reaction. 92.5 in the reactant, so we must have 92.5 in the products. Mass is conserved, it's never lost. If we have a look at this equation here, and we just simply look at the coloured balls, carbon is a black one, and it's undergone a reaction, but there's still one carbon on the other side. Same as the sulphur, there's one sulphur on the reactant side, one sulphur on the product side. And if you count the oxygens, the red ones, you'll notice the same thing, they're equal on both sides. So a chemical reaction must be balanced with the same number of atoms on both sides of the reaction. So let's practice that. Example one, butane gas reacts with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and liquid water. And you're given the formulas for these compounds at the moment. Some of them you will have to know. Butane plus oxygen reacts to form carbon dioxide and water. That is the worded chemical equation. We can include the states if we want, but for the worded chemical equation, it's not particularly important. The states are very important for when we go to do the balanced chemical equation. <clears throat> so the second part says write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. So here we replace the words with the formulas. C3H8, it was a gas, so in bra little brackets, G, plus O2, little brackets, G, goes to carbon dioxide, little brackets, gas, G, plus water, which they told us was a liquid. Now I'm gonna balance this by a technique called inspection first, and then I'm gonna show you another trick if you are struggling with that. Now inspection means just by looking at the chemical equation and trying to balance it one thing at a time. So on the left, I have three carbons. On the right, I only have one carbon dioxide. Now I can't change the formulas. So what I can do though, is multiply the carbon dioxide by three to balance for the carbon. But that's also put out the oxygen, but I'll come back to the oxygen because I want to focus on hydrogen. I have eight hydrogens on the left, so I need to add four more waters, because four times two is eight, to give me eight hydrogens. Now that's had an impact on the oxygens. I now have three times two, which is six from the carbon dioxide, plus four, which is 10. So I can put my five in front of my oxygen gas. Another technique is via bookkeeping, where we try and keep tally of all of the atoms in the reaction. So I have a tally for the reactants and a tally for the products. So on the left, I have three carbons, eight hydrogens, and two oxygens. On the right, I have one carbon, two hydrogens, and I actually have three oxygens, but I'll fix that in a second. And what I try and do here is I try and make them all equal. So this time I'm gonna start with a hydrogen. So I put a four in front of the water, which that fixes up the hydrogen. I now have eight hydrogen on the right, eight hydrogen on the left. But that's changed my number of oxygens. I have four in the water and two in the carbon dioxide, so that now gives me six oxygens. I started with three, but by doing that four to the water, I now have six. That's more than what I have on the left, and I've still got a problem with the carbons. So if I put my three in front of the oxygen, well, that will help to balance out the oxygen, so now the hydrogens and the oxygens are, are good to go. But still got the problem with the carbon, so I put the three in front of the carbon dioxide, which gives me three carbons, but that's changed the number of oxygens, and now I have 10 oxygens on the right-hand side, and I can fix that up by adding a few more oxygens on the left, giving me my 5O2. So the balanced chemical equation is one. Example number two. Hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium carbonate to produce sodium chloride, water, and carbon dioxide. 
So this time we've been given some of the reactants and products, but not all of them. It's expected that you would know what water and carbon dioxide are. <clears throat> the worded chemical equation, hydrochloric acid plus sodium carbonate, they're our reactants, reacts to form or goes to sodium chloride, water and carbon dioxide. That is our worded chemical equation. To write the balanced chemical equation, what we need to do is swap the reactants, the, the symbols for the words. Another little top tip here is hydrochloric acid is always aqueous. So that will help us with our states. So now if we swap the words for the chemical symbols, hydrochloric acid, HCl, acids will be aqueous, plus a solution of sodium carbonate, solution meaning it's aqueous, goes to sodium chloride, which is an aqueous solution, it says it's a solution, plus water, which is always a liquid, plus carbon dioxide, which is a gas. Now to balance this up, let's have a look at the HCl. Oh, we have two hydrogens on the right, so I need to put two HCl, that fixes up my hydrogens. But then I need to balance for the chlorine, so I've put a 2 in front of the NaCl to give me two chlorines. I've got two sodiums on the left with the Na2CO3, so that seems okay. And then the CO3, well, one of them's gone into CO2, and then the extra oxygen is in the water. So that is balanced. Example number three. Sodium chloride solution is added to a silver nitrate solution to produce a silver chloride precipitate and a solution of sodium nitrate. Here we're given the names of the chemicals, but we're not given the chemical formulas. These are all ionic compounds and you're given a solubility table so you can determine the formulas. So the worded chemical equation would be sodium chloride plus silver nitrate reacts to form or goes to silver chloride plus sodium nitrate. Now remember that a precipitate, when we did that little activity, two solutions mixed together, if they form a solid, the solid is the precipitate. So in this reaction, they said that silver chloride is the precipitate, so that must be the solid. So now we've got to work out the formulas before we can write the balanced chemical equation. So NaCl, sodium chloride, silver nitrate is a silver iron, a nitrate iron, they nicely balance out. So it's AgNO3. Silver chloride, a silver iron and a chloride iron, they nicely balance each other out. So the formula is AgCl. Sodium nitrate, a sodium is positive, a nitrate is negative, they nicely balance each other out. Formula is NaNO3. So I've got my pieces to the puzzle, now I've got to put them into the chemical equation. NaCl, a solution, so aqueous, plus Ag. NO3, again a solution, so it's aqueous, reacts to form, so goes to. Now our precipitate, AgCl, will be solid. Our precipitate is a solid, plus sodium nitrate, NaNO3, which is aqueous. The order is not important. Finally, we need to check if it's balanced. Looking at it, we've got one sodium, one sodium, one silver, one silver, a nitrate and a chloride. It's balanced, we're good to go. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, make sure you watch it again if you have to, and I'll see you next time.